Hello, and welcome to my talk, Streaming Fast and Slow, Mitigating Watermark Skew in Large Stateful Jobs. My name is Shahid, and I'm an infrastructure engineer at Stripe. Stripe is a technology company that builds financial infrastructure services, for example, online payment processing. At Stripe, I work on the Stream Compute team, which runs a few stream processing systems, one of which is the Flink platform that we provide to developers at Stripe. To give a brief overview of the talk, we'll start by talking about an application called the Ledger Deduplicator and one of its components, the dual source. Then we'll talk about the challenges we had running this application in production. We'll also talk a lot about the performance optimizations that we've made, and we'll conclude with the lessons that we learned from this experience. So let's start by talking about the deduplicator. A deduplicator is a system that reads in records and only outputs the unique records it has seen. In this example, we are deduplicating emojis and the duplicate skull emojis are then deduplicated and only appear once in the output on the right. At Stripe, all money movement is recorded in a single dataset called the ledger. As you can imagine, deduplication of the ledger is important for a financial technology company like Stripe. This is especially true when we want to provide a real-time ledger that will be used to power internal payments infrastructure in real time. There are a few challenges though. First, for a number of reasons, developers can republish transactions to the ledger at any time. Duplicates can and are expected to exist in the raw ledger. Second, we need to provide all-time deduplication that means that if a transaction was originally published in 2015 and then republished again in 2020, we need to ensure that the 2020 transaction gets filtered by the deduplicator. Stripe does not have infinite retention in our Kafka, in our Kafka topics. Instead, topics are archived on S3, where we do have infinite retention. So in order to have an all-time deduplicator, we created a custom Flink source called the dual source that allows us to read from all the archives on S3 and then automatically hand off to Kafka once we've caught up to real time for a topic. We call it being in backfill mode when we're reading from S3 but before we hand off to Kafka. For the purposes of this talk though, we're only interested in the application's backfill mode. In fact, my colleagues Mike and Aaron presented on how they built the dual source at last year's Flink Forward conference in Berlin. Let's talk about challenges with the dual source. When we first started the backfill, we saw decent performance for a little while. However, throughput would quickly plateau and then degrade during the backfill until we ground to a halt and stop making any progress. On initial inspection, we saw that the number of records per S3 file increased. We realized that this sort of makes sense as we archive records in 15 minute segments, and we expect the size of these segments to increase as Stripe increased the number of records it processed over time. We also saw that CPU was 100% utilized, and so we thought maybe we're just under provisioned and we need a beefier cluster. And so naturally we just scaled up. However, we saw counterintuitive results from scaling up. We initially got a boost from the increased parallelism. However, performance would degrade even faster than before. We started to experience very long checkpoint times as well. It appeared that actually running with lower parallelism gave us slightly more reliability. This is sort of a mystery that we'll revisit a little later on in the talk. Next, we decided to just start tweaking configuration in hopes that we could find that magic switch that would unlock all the performance wins we were hoping for. We ran the ledger deduplicator on SSDs, and the RocksDB flash SSD optimized option is set to false by default, so it made sense to enable that. We also tried increasing the size of network buffers. We then tried things like enabling object reuse in the hopes that we could save CPU cycles on serialization and deserialization. But really, we just sort of blindly tried all the advice that we could find online about, improve, about improving Flink performance. 
But actually, some things did work. Most notably, setting the flash SSD optimized setting to true did give us twice did give us twice the peak throughput. However, performance was still degrading, and the Legacy Duplicator app struggled to make its way all the way through the backfill. Before we talk more about performance optimizations, it will be useful to look at what's going on under the hood in this application. Let's imagine we start with eight days worth of unread files on S3. We first send two days worth of files, each to a different source subtask. When the sources are done processing the splits, the data is sent to the deduplicator operator. We then emit a watermark from each source subtask, corresponding to where in event time it has processed up to. The min watermark from the source determines the deduplicator's watermark. Now that, now that the deduplicator's watermark is set to 1, we can sync day 1's data, but we still have to buffer days to day 2's data. Next, we read in days 3 and 4. Again, source subtask 1 finishes processing the data for day 3. The deduplicator reads in the min watermark from the sources, which is day 2. So day 2's data is sent to the sink, and day 3's data goes into the buffered state. Now days 5 and 7 are sent to subtask 1. Subtask 2 is taking a really long time to process day 4's data. It does eventually finish though, and day 3 and 4's data are sent to the sink. Then, day 5 and 7's data is buffered in state. We see that when there is skew between the source subtask's watermarks, the size of the buffered state grows. This, caused the app, this causes the app to move a lot slower, as it spends more time checkpointing and spending more time in I.O. talking to RocksDB. You can imagine a pathological case where one subtask is racing to the finish while the other struggles to even get through its first file. These sources are aggressively burning through their files as fast as they can, but as skew grows between the faster and the slower sources, so does the state size, and this will eventually cause applications to slow to a crawl. So where does SKU come from? As we mentioned, some S3 files are just larger than others. It could be the case that we had a hotkey on one of the partitions. However, our key space for this particular application should be uniformly distributed, so that was not an issue for us. But we also noticed that some task managers receive less work than others. This allowed them to process their splits faster and progress through the archives faster as well. So we did some digging into why this was the case. Specifically, we looked at how records are distributed among tasks. Key groups are assigned by taking a hash of the record's key and modding it by the max parallelism. Key groups are assigned to tasks by multiplying its group number by the operator's parallelism and dividing by the max parallelism. As we see in the table, when parallelism is equal to 1, and the max parallelism is equal to eight. We send all eight key. We send all eight key groups to the first and only task. When parallelism is equal to two and max parallelism is equal to eight, the first half of the key groups go to the first task, and the second half go to the second task. When parallelism is equal to three, we see the first three key groups go to the first task, the next three key groups go to the second task, and the last two key groups go to the third task. Similarly, when parallelism is equal to four, each of the four subtasks receives two key groups to process. But if we look closely, there's an actually a problem here. Look at the column for parallelism three. We see only two key groups are being processed by the third subtask. This task is going to process its splits faster and progress to the archives faster, which will create watermark skew with the other two tasks. The lesson here is to set your parallelism to be a divisor of your max parallelism. This way, we get balanced key group assignment among our tasks. What else can we do to improve performance? 
We know that we can't do much to make our slow tasks faster, but we do know that we can make our fast tasks slower. Imagine a 100 meter dash. We have many racers, but one is sprinting ahead to the finish line. This is sort of what we have in our application with some source tasks racing ahead while others are behind. The space in the middle represents skew and event time between the tasks. And as, we've, as we know, the greater the skew, the more buffered state we'll have to carry, which slows down the race overall. It would be great if we can somehow stop the fast runners though. Fortunately, Flink introduced the Global Aggregate Manager in version 1.8. This allows tasks to share small state on the job manager. There's an existing job manager watermark tracker, which uses the Global Aggregate Manager to track the global min watermark among all subtasks. So we initialize a tracker in our source. When we want to emit a watermark, we first retrieve the global min watermark. We then compute the skew between the current task watermark and the global min watermark. We then sleep in a loop until the skew is within an acceptable range. And finally, we allow the source task to resume emitting its watermark once we've, once we've achieved acceptable skew. We also made a slight optimization to calculate allowable skew as a function of the job's parallelism and the number of partitions in the archive that we were reading. This allows us to ensure that tasks are roughly moving in lockstep through the archives. But the big question is, did any of this actually work? And we were really pleased when it actually did. What we see here is the same job running with a few different configurations. The y-axis the y -axis represents throughput, and the higher the number, the better. We see low throughput without any synchronization. Then we added synchronization among the source tasks and saw a huge increase in throughput just by using the same parallelism settings. We then increased parallelism again and saw more increases in throughput. Finally, we tweaked the parallelism to be a divisor of max parallelism and saw even better gains in throughput. Most importantly, we now had a way, a reliable way, to scale our applications horizontally. It seems counterintuitive, but by making some of our source subtasks slower, the entire application was able to move faster. So let's talk about some of the lessons that we learned through this experience. The first is, don't fixate on config tuning, especially early on in your optimization process. I got a little too caught up in trying to tweak things on the surface when the problem was much deeper in the application. That said, the Flash SSD optimized setting did give us some extra lift, and we have since made it the default for all options that use for all applications that use SSDs and the RocksDB state backend. Parallelism ratios actually matter when you're trying to balance work across your tasks. Also, make sure to keep an eye on SKU. If you have an application where tasks for an operator or source are burning through as fast as possible, and this operator is upstream of a stateful operator whose state size grows with increased watermark skew, consider using a throttling approach like the one I presented here. Lyft has contributed watermark synchronization via throttling to the Kinesis source because they were seeing similar issues with watermark skew in their applications. There are also some future improvements that can still be made. First, the default task slot distribution strategy greedily fills up one task manager at a time before moving on to the next. As of Flink version 1.9.2, we can change this behavior to evenly spread out task slots across all hosts in a cluster, and that's specifically all task managers in a cluster. Flink will try to allocate slots from these task managers so that they are evenly utilized. Additionally, Flink will try to spread out the subtasks belonging to the same operator equally across the available slots. In this particular example, this would allow us to run fewer source tasks on the same task manager, which again would really help out with watermark skew. Additionally, Flip27 enables us to rewrite our source, 
our source implementation to share an S3 file iterator. In this way, source tasks would be processing fewer S3 files in parallel, which should also help to reduce watermark skew.